With ProPresenter Cloud, you can easily synchronize multiple ProPresenter machines across the internet. An example of this is if you're working on a presentation at home and you want to synchronize it back to your church computer, you can use the cloud to accomplish this. This also allows for collaboration between users who don't actually have ProPresenter installed on their computer. They can utilize the ProPresenter Cloud web interface that we'll look at a little bit later. And finally, this simplifies data management by keeping everything centrally located and keeps all of your documents and data up to date in one place. So let's look at a few different ways that you can use the ProPresenter Cloud. The first example is somebody who wants to work remotely, either at their house or another place, but also wants to update the church computer via the ProPresenter Cloud. This way, all documents that they work on remotely at their house would be synced up to the cloud and then sent to the church computer. The next is for organizations with multiple departments that want to share libraries together. This way they can share just parts of ProPresenter with each other and keep all of their libraries in sync. Yet another is an organization with an administrator who wants to create playlists and then have a second person on a separate machine import all of the media. Now there are many other ways that you can utilize ProPresenter Cloud. Those are just a few examples to get you started. But one thing to keep in mind, no matter how you have ProPresenter Cloud set up, you'll need to have an internet connection on every single machine to get them to synchronize across the internet. Now let's look at how to set up ProPresenter Cloud for the very first time. Inside ProPresenter, we're going to go to ProPresenter, Preferences, and then under the Sync tab, we're going to choose Cloud. Now at the bottom, you'll notice two options, one to log in and one for new account. If you haven't yet signed up, click the new account button to sign up for the cloud service. Since I've already signed up, let's log in. Once I've logged in, I'll be presented with two options on how I want ProPresenter Cloud to interact with this computer. The top option is saying that the cloud is going to send files down to this machine. But we want to select the bottom option since this is our first time setting it up. We want all the files from this computer to be sent up to the ProPresenter Cloud. Once we're done with this, we can hit done, but we can make changes to this at any time. Next, you'll see it's brought up our libraries. On the left, you'll see all of our local libraries, and on the right, you'll see all of the cloud libraries we want it to sync with. Since I've previously set this up, it already has selected the correct library. But when you first set it up, you'll see create new cloud library selected for each of your libraries, since there are no libraries currently in the cloud. Once that's set correctly, you can hit OK. Now you'll notice that it started syncing. And when you sync for the first time, it can take quite a while depending on your internet connection. So let's say you have around five gigs of data inside ProPresenter that need to be uploaded to the ProPresenter cloud. If you're on an average US internet connection of 10 megs, it can take about an hour. If you have more data than that, or your internet connection is slower, it can take much longer. So just know that the first time you sync, it can take quite a while. So that's the basics of getting our first computer set up. Let's look quickly at how to set up a secondary computer to receive files. So I'm gonna log out, and now let's log back in and pretend that this is a secondary computer that we want to receive files. Again, we need to log in. And this time, instead of sending files up to the cloud, we're gonna say this computer only is going to receive files from the cloud. Once we've selected that, we can hit Done. It's going to bring up our same libraries where we can choose our local libraries and which cloud library we want it to sync with. And now we're syncing this computer. What allows this to happen is the option you see here to prevent uploads. When you select prevent uploads, no matter how many times you update files or add new files, none of your files will be sent up to the cloud. You'll only receive updated files and new files that have been added to the cloud. Now you can deselect this at any time to allow this computer to upload content to the cloud, or you can select it at any time to prevent it from uploading content to the cloud. Now that we understand that, let's take a look at the rest of the options. 
Above here in the frequency area, you can see it's currently set to manual only. This means we need to manually press the sync button anytime we want to synchronize this computer. We can do it here in the preferences panel or by going to the menu bar app above. We can also change this to at interval. This will automatically sync either daily or hourly, which is really great because it keeps your ProPresenter installation up to date at all times. Now below there, you'll see we have an option to allow multiple transfers. This will allow you to transfer more than one file at a time up or down if you have a fast internet connection. For slower internet connections, it would be a good idea to not have this selected and it will still just upload one file at a time. Now let's look at the sync options. Our first option is to synchronize everything. This will synchronize everything inside ProPresenter to the cloud to use for all other computers. But if you want to fine tune the details, you have options to synchronize just parts of ProPresenter up to the cloud. This is great because it allows you to take full advantage of the cloud to only send or receive the parts of ProPresenter you want from other computers. So let's look at how each of these work. The first is your library documents. This includes everything that's inside your library. And if we want to include playlists, we can check the box below to send any playlist that we have created. Next, we have our video and image files. This synchronizes all video and images that have been added as foreground or background media cues to your documents. And if we want to send all of the background and foreground videos from our video and image bin, we can select that option as well. Next, we'll see audio files, and this synchronizes all audio files that are added as media cues to documents. And if we want to synchronize all the audio files in the audio bin, you can select this option. After that, you'll see our templates. This will synchronize any templates you've created. And last, you'll see user data. And user data includes things like props, messages, masks, and stage display layouts. Now let's look at how the cloud website works. And to do this, I'm gonna click on the Manage button, or we can go to cloud.propresenter.com. So now we'll log in. Once we're logged in, we'll see an overview of our account. We'll see how much storage bandwidth we've used and transfer bandwidth. And you'll notice that transfer bandwidth resets every single month and only reflects downloads. Now, if you're running out of storage space or transfer bandwidth, you can always click this button here to upgrade your account to a larger size. Next, you'll see all of the files that have been uploaded for our app data. Below there, you'll see all of the documents from your libraries that have been uploaded. And finally, you'll see all of the media that's been uploaded to the cloud. Now let's say there's a file that gets uploaded to the cloud that you don't want sent to all of the other connected machines. You can easily go over here and delete that file. Now you'll notice that it actually changes to an undelete button because you have 30 days to undelete any file that you've previously deleted, making it easy to reinstate a file that you may have deleted on accident. And lastly, for people who don't have ProPresenter installed but want to contribute any sort of file, you can go up here to the upload icon and it will bring you to a file browser that you can easily choose images, videos, or any other files you want to sync to the ProPresenter cloud. Here's a few other things to note before you start utilizing the ProPresenter cloud. The first is that hot folders do not work with the cloud service because ProPresenter needs all of your media files to be stored inside its central media folder. They can't be linked to external files. Because of this, you'll notice that hot folders have been disabled inside the interface. Now, speaking of hot folders, since ProPresenter Cloud is a file synchronization service, all of the files and content inside your media repository folder will be uploaded to the cloud. So when you delete a video or image file from your video and image bin, you're given the option of just deleting the queue or moving the file to the trash. And if you delete the queue, the file continues to be synced to the cloud because it still exists inside your media repository. But if you move it to the trash, it will be deleted from the video and image bin and the cloud. Next, if there's two different users working on the exact same file, those changes won't be merged inside the cloud. Only the newest and most recently saved file will be synchronized to the ProPresenter cloud.
Now for people who are using video and images on a weekly basis with the exact same name to help prevent conflicts with previously deleted versions of those files, make sure you use unique file names. So instead of using files like sermon1.jpg and sermon2.jpg, use something like sermon1 and the date.jpg and sermon2 and the date.jpg to help prevent those conflicts. And finally, make sure you save. Only saved files will be synchronized to the cloud. So if you want whatever you're working on to be synchronized to all your other computers, make sure you save before you synchronize to the ProPresenter cloud.